Hi Africa. Je m'appelle Kojo Oponkroma. I'm 40 years old. I am the grandson of a palm wine tapper. Uh, born in Koforidua, schooled in Koforidua and Accra. I think initially I thought I'd be a Catholic priest, but I'm yet to receive the call, who knows. A member of parliament for the Ofonsia UB constituency and currently the minister responsible for information. Life for me growing up was, was calm. Um, I don't think everybody has to pretend and tell a story that he had a very difficult childhood. So I was, you know, having a simple childhood. My, my mom was a teacher. My dad was initially a teacher as well and later became a banker. We traveled between towns because my father got transferred a lot. The first time I came to Accra was in 1989 and I couldn't believe so many cars back to back like that. Apparently it was called traffic. Um, and I've lived in Accra since 1989, uh, moving in and out to school. And I still live in Accra now. No, I, 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 I always wanted to uh, complete my education and work in the private sector as a businessman and then by some blessed accidents i got involved in journalism for about a decade and now in politics uh, for about eight years now i'll say maybe one of my my highest memories was when i had the privilege to host a number of presidential debates to see all of these high towering figures in the country um, who were vying for the office of the president and to have me, this young man, put there to question uh, these people and to interrogate the answers that um, they gave. While I looked very, I mean, I watched the video quite recently, while I looked very calm and in charge, I was shivering in my seat. The desire to do better tomorrow, that's what keeps me going. Nelson Mandela. Um, and I think I'm very much inspired by Nelson Mandela for two reasons. He spent a lot of time, a lot of time, uh, fighting for what he believed in. And he also knew when to leave the state. I think my constituency is the most exciting constituency in the whole of the country. Fonsi you will be previously not well known, but now very largely on the map because we are making a lot of noise about ourselves and attracting a lot of uh, development into our constituency. It is um, soon to be the cassava capital of the uh, Eastern region, as we are looking to invest a lot more in uh, cassava production. Already we do very well in rice and oil palm, but cassava is the next big thing that we want to add to it. Usually I think I say that one of the biggest challenges that I deal with as information minister is the challenge of disinformation or misinformation, where people deliberately cook up stories and throw it out there, forcing um, government to come make a response. But I think my real big challenge is getting information from within the government system so that you can put it out. There's a lot that's going on in government, but the biggest challenge I think is getting that information from within the system, then you can put it out. We've developed some new tools that are making it easier and better, um, but it remains one of our biggest challenges. Pleased, maybe. I think um, when the COVID curves finally came down, I felt very content that we had contributed significantly in that battle by providing a lot of information that helped people to know what to do and how to protect themselves. And I look at the, you know, the members of the team and I'm happy that we've been able to do something that has helped to save a lot of lives. It's one of the things that I look back with uh, joy on. The office work starts at home actually, usually around 7 a.m. A lady called Ivy would call me and start you know, going through uh, every 30 minutes what we have to achieve for the day and then I may have some meetings at home before I get to the office maybe around 7.38. Um, they are torn between management meetings and project meetings and then you are always scared to receive that phone call from the boss that something is happening and uh, you need to help put together a response. Usually ends pretty late back at my desk at home uh, reading over the days media briefings and what may likely be a big attack on government tomorrow so that we can see how we can prepare a response. If I'm not in the office, I'm probably in the constituency. I'm starting a little farm. You should come and see it. Maize, cocoa, oil, palm. You should come and enjoy it sometime. But if I'm not in the constituency, um, either engaging with uh, my constituents um, or on the farm, then you'll probably find me at home here in Accra 
locked up in my, my den watching some football or sleeping. I'll probably be in the courts putting it to people. I put it to you, I put it to you. Because that's what I um, left journalism for. But before I could go full throttle into that one, then um, I moved into politics as well. So if I wasn't in politics today, I'll probably be in the courts. But if I wasn't doing either of them, I'll be back in the studios as a journalist any day. I think that if I could say anything to young people which they should take seriously, it would be the fact that they need to spend this period of their lives building capacity. Youth goes away very quickly, but you've got to spend that time building capacity to be able to do something uh, with it. So if there's one thing I could tell young people, take advantage of the energy and the time you have now to build your capacity. That's what is going to make you excel in the near future. Yeah.